Hello everyone, my name is Kathleen Smith and it has been an absolute pleasure getting to know each and every one of you through your posts throughout the semester. It's been a fun one, but I don't know about you all, but I'm glad that it's over. <laughs> um, a special congratulations to all graduates and best of luck in all that you do. And as always and forever, go Cats. So let's hop right into it. My research proposal. Um, when we started the semester, I thought my question was going to be, are minority populations disproportionately affected by voter registration and access laws? I thought that this broad stroke would be effective in telling the full story because there are a good number of disenfranchising voter laws that have and will continue to crop up all over America. However, as I reviewed the literature and began thinking about the realities of conducting this research, it became clear to me that my focus needed to be homed in a little bit. Voter identification laws are a popular form of controlling access to the ballot box. In fact, currently 36 out of the 50 United States have laws requesting or requiring voters to show some form of identification at the polls. Of those 36, Georgia, Indiana, Kansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Wisconsin require photo identification be presented at the polls. Therefore, for my research proposal, my question is, do strict photo identification voter laws have a disproportionate impact on minority voter turnout? To study this question, I'm going to selfishly take a look at this through the lens of how it affects the voting population in Georgia, where strict photo identification laws exist. And I say selfishly because I'm moving to Georgia here in a couple of weeks, so I'm going to look at it through that lens. Uh, there's currently contradictory research that exists on the topic. In a 2019 study, the researchers surmised that strict voter identification laws have no impact on voter turnout. However, ironically, in the abstract of the study, the researchers make the point for proponents against voter ID laws. The abstract states that groups of voters less likely to hold an ID include Blacks and Hispanics. However, in a study published in 2017, there was evidence found by researchers that Hispanic turnout is 7.1 percentage points lower in strict voter ID states than it is in other states. For Blacks, the gap is a full 4.6 percentage points. For Asian Americans, the difference is 6.2 points, and for multiracial Americans, turnout is 5.3 percentage points lower. Research surrounding the effects of laws like Georgia's is important because there exists a greater likelihood of more states adopting similar legislation. Without clear and empirical evidence of the disenfranchisement strict voter ID laws cause to voters of color, proof is lacking to deem such legislation unconstitutional. To understand it, the issues currently being faced by minority voters in the United States of America, the implications surrounding the Supreme Court of the United States striking down Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 has to be understood. A portion of Section 5 states, a covered state or political subdivision of a state may not put into effect any voting qualification or prerequisite to voting or standard practice or procedure with respect to voting different from that in force of, um, or effect on November 1st, 1964 unless it first submits the change in election law for preclearance to either the Justice Department or the United States District Court for the District of Columbia. And the department or the court finds that such law would not deny or abridge the right to vote on account of race or color. If the jurisdiction submits the law to the Justice Department and the department does not object to it as discriminatory within 60 days, the jurisdiction may put the law into effect. This section of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was vital for ensuring that discriminatory voting legislation would hopefully never become law. Even more useful than the preclearance itself was the simple premise that all changes to voting practice would be reviewed. This deterred such changes from even being proposed. However, in 2013, the Supreme Court of the United States held that this section of the Voting Rights Act was unconstitutional and was therefore unenforceable in the case Shelby County versus Holder. Chief Justice John Roberts said in his decision, 
Voting discrimination still exists. No one doubts that. Still, he held that preclearance was unconstitutional and was thus no longer a layer of protection between minority voters and access to the polls. A lack of access directly correlates with a lack of representation. A common phrase in the political world is, elections have consequences, and this is true. Every year, Americans go to the polls to select the individuals who will create the policies that are the driving force behind the societal and economic direction of the United States. The right to vote is undeniably the most important and fundamental right every American possesses. So, representatives elected to government positions should represent the interests of the majority of the constituents they serve. Furthermore, at the federal level, the elected officials have a direct say in who is granted lifetime appointments to federal judgeships, whether it be at the appellate level or to the Supreme Court. When these judges and justices are installed, there are consequences that come with their installation. Their interpretation of a law's constitutionality is the final say in whether or not it stands. With the strike down of Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, a barrier between equal voting rights for all and those who wish to take them away was dismantled. Voters of color, as we previously discussed, are less likely than white voters to possess a photo ID. Therefore, if anything can be deduced from this research about strict voter identification laws and how they affect voters of color far more than white voters, is that there must be action taken at the federal level to restore protection similar to what existed in Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. To do this, I'm going to be conducting quantitative research. We need clear, empirical, black and white evidence that this is what is happening, that strict voter ID laws have a greater impact on minority voters than white voters. The research method is going to be descriptive. We're not going to focus in on the why, but <laughs> But the why is important and a topic for another day. In this study, the dependent variable, which is an ordinal measurement, is voter turnout percentage by race in the state of Georgia for the 2020 general election. The Georgia Secretary of State Office is the party responsible for determining the voter turnout and the demographics of those who do vote. Therefore, the data from their office will be garnered from the office's guidelines. The independent variable in the study, also an ordinal measurement, is the percentage of each race that possess, possesses a valid photo identification. In Georgia, it's possible to be a registered voter without possessing a photo ID. The study is meant to show whether or not there exists a correlation between voter turnout by race and voter identification laws, which is, in turn, the possession of a photo identification. The control variable in this study is that only respondents who are registered to vote are considered. This ensures that the study is reflective of the actual voting population. After collecting the data from the survey as well from the Georgia Secretary of State's website, the percentage of voters within a race category will be compared against the voter turnout in the 2020 general election. I'm hypothesizing that the lower the incidence of possession of photo identification among a certain race, the lower the turnout in the election. Furthermore, my hypo hypothesis is that minority populations will have a lower percentage of possession of photo ID and thus strict voter identification laws will be shown to disproportionately affect the minority populations. The sample for this study is going to be the vo voting population of Georgia and we will be using a probability technique to, to sample um, the, the voting population because every voter in the state of Georgia is just as likely to be selected and here's why. The data collected to show voter turnout in the 2020 general election is from the Georgia Secretary of State and that will be done using their own method. However, the data from the survey um, that I will do is going to be collected through telephone surveys utilizing randomized Georgia phone numbers of approximately 73,000 people. And this is 1% of the active voting population in Georgia during the 2020 general election. In the survey, the surveyors will pose the following questions. First, are you registered to vote? Second, 
Do you possess a valid photo identification? And third, with which race do you identify? Only respondents who answer yes to the first question will be compared against the data collected from the Georgia Secretary of State regarding voter turnout. Once this control is accounted for, the percentage of voters by race who possess a photo ID will be calculated. Voter suppression or attempted voter suppression is undoubtedly an issue across the United States. Strict voter ID laws like the one in Georgia could have a disproportionate effect on the turnout of minority voters. Based on the most recent publications on the topic, there's a great likelihood that this is the case. The data collected in this study will come from two sources. First, the Georgia Secretary of State's voter turnout percentages by race from the 2020 general election. Second, phone interviews of Georgia residents will be conducted. The primary purpose of this survey is to determine the possession of a valid photo identification by registered voters only. These results will then be broken down into percentages based on race. With this data in hand, it can be determined whether or not there is a disproportionate impact on minority voter turnout in a state with strict voter ID law. This same study can be conducted in states with similar laws to corroborate the results found in Georgia. No person should have less of a say in what their democracy should look like because of the color of their skin. By presenting clear, quantifiable, and irrefutable evidence that this is the case, that voter ID laws like the one in Georgia are disproportionately affecting populations and uh, communities of color, there could be a myriad of effects that would change access to the ballot box for generations to come. Again, congratulations to all of the graduating seniors and best of luck in all that you do. We made it guys <laughs> and have a wonderful summer. Thanks.